Shout out Jake Britton. I know you like that intro, man. Um, welcome back. Let me check to see if my camera. Uh, I thought it went off focus. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit thrown off right now. Um, like literally just five minutes ago, I was downstairs doing the dishes, right? And um, I do my normal routine, right? I, 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 you know, water the dishes. I put them in the dishwasher, and then I open the shelf. I go down to get the soap, and I'm not even looking down, right? Um, cause I'm just so used to, you know, grabbing down, grabbing those little soap packets. I grab down, I feel something squishy. And then I kind of lift up a little bit. I'm like, oh, that's not fucking soap. So I jump back and I'm like, oh shit. And then I look down and it, it, it's a rat, dude. It's, it's a, actually, I think it's a mouse. Yeah, I think it was a mouse. Um, I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like it was, it was I was so thrown off, you know? Um, now, you call me a bitch, call me whatever you want. I was freaked out, man. I mean, so yeah. Um, and then I'm like, all right, I got to dispose of this thing, right? Well, not dispose. I, I kept it alive. I kept it alive. Don't cancel me. Uh, <laughs> cancel me for killing, uh, killing mice. Um, and then I figured it was dead, right? Because when I first picked it up, it didn't like, it didn't make a noise. It didn't move. And, and the whole time, it was just sitting there with its eyes open. I thought I, like, died with its eyes open or some shit. I don't know how mice die. So, um, I'm like, all right, I gotta do it. So, I pick up the thing, and then it goes, wee, 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 wee. and I'm like, what the? So, I drop it again. I'm like, god damn it! And then, you know, eventually, I, I, I bring it outside. I get it out. Um, he jumps out the thing. He actually flips down the stairs. I kind of felt bad for the little guy because he was geeked out. He's flipping down the, the outside stairs. But he's, he's chilling. I saw him moving around. So, um. Yeah, as long as that motherfucker doesn't come back in, he's he's cool to live outside. But yeah, anyways, let's get into these NFL picks, man. So we're doing a recap. So yeah, I'm a little bit thrown off right now. Um, so we'll do a recap. I had three losses last week. Um, it, it was this game, Chargers, Houston, Texans. Honestly, I, I don't regret that pick. I still would have went with the Chargers. I could see it coming in a sense in a little bit because the Texans, they get weird wins like this. And the Chargers... Chargers are one of those teams that could beat any team on any given week and lose to any team on any given week. Um, sort of like the Vikings. Um, and, yeah, but Davis, Mil Davis Mills is actually doing all right. He's not even too bad of a quarterback. Um, I'm not going to lie. I never wear a hat either. It's just been a weird day. It's been a day of just unexpected stuff. But we, we mess with that. You know, you got to live for the unexpected and not the expected. Um and then what else happened here? So the Bears, Seattle Seahawks. Remember I told you guys I went with the Bears at first and I changed it. I don't, re I mean, I do kind of regret it because I did have the Bears at first. But the Seahawks could not find a way to win, man. And then what else did I lose? I lost the, uh, um, what other game did I lose? I know I had three losses. Um, oh, yeah, the Monday Night Football game. Bro, the Saints are so abysmal, man. I mean, I know they had Ian Book and a lot of guys out, um, but they were god-awful on offense. They weren't even bad defensively. It's just their offense could not do. They had, like, one good drive where they moved the ball upfield, and it resulted in them, you know, losing the ball on four-down conversions. So, I, I just can't get the Monday night football matchups right. And it sucks because if I got that game right, I probably would have won, like, $500 in my other thing. So, yeah, let's move on to the picks. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure the camera's not blurry. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, let's move on to the week 17 picks right here. A little bit of a long intro there. Um, so, yeah, let's start off here. We got the Chiefs facing off against the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, this is a tough one, man. Bengals looked really good against the Ravens. Um, I, I think that was more because of the matchup. You know, the Ravens were missing some guys in the secondary. Um Joe Burrow always has a good time against teams that are in man coverage. This defense is going to give different looks, though. I do expect it to be a lot closer of a game. I'm going to give it to the Chiefs. I just think the Chiefs are going to be more consistent throughout the game. I think they're more prepared for a big game like this. Um, and I think the Bengals fall back to earth just a little bit. Uh, and then we got the Raiders against the Colts. Um, give me the Colts at home. I just don't like what I'm seeing from the Raiders. They they haven't really been able to find their offensive groove. They won last week against the Broncos, but um, the Colts are going to offer a lot more problems. The Raiders actually shut down the run game pretty well against the Denver Broncos. Um, 
but it's a whole different story when you're talking about Jonathan Taylor. So I think Jonathan Taylor comes out here and he has a day. Um, and the Colts continue this win streak that they're on to go 10-6 and six for the season. Uh, well, not for the season, um, for this point. And then we got the Jags against the Patriots. Give me the Patriots. That's my lock of the week. I don't see the Jags winning. Trevor Lawrence is going to struggle, and Mac Jones is going to have a bounce back game. Uh, and then we got the Dolphins against the Titans. I'm give me the Titans at home. Um, it's not that I don't have faith in the Dolphins. I'm just thinking that they got to lose at some point. I know they're red hot and they're looking really good. Um, I'm gonna go with the Titans. Though. I, I I do think this Miami defense could cause a lot of problems to Ryan Tannehill. I think they're gonna send a lot of blitzing, put him under a lot of pressure. That Tennessee Titans offensive line has been pretty bad um, when it comes to pass protection, so I do think Miami will dominate there. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping that A.J. Brown has a big game and Ryan Tannehill just plays the short action game, you know, just do quick two-second snaps out of the pocket. Um, or, sorry, two-second, you know, throws inside the pocket and then finds ways to, to roll out better. Um and I think Tennessee's defense could also hold up the Miami Dolphins offense pretty well for the most part. But that should be a really good game. Could really go either way. Um, I'm just going to go with the Titans there. And then we got the Broncos facing off against the Chargers. Give me the Chargers at home. Last time these two teams played, the Broncos won, and I predicted that one right. This time, I think the Chargers get a win after that pretty bad loss against the Texans. Um they looked abysmal against Davis Mills. So, I mean, Drew Locke, if he plays, or Teddy Bridgewater, either of them could come out here and have a good game. But I think the Chargers do a better job here. Um, they know it's a must-win game at home, divisional matchup. So, yeah, give me the Chargers. Uh, and then we got the Browns versus the Steelers. Two really big, um, or one really big game for two teams, as I should say. Um, the Browns on the road. Baker Mayfield looks god awful. Um, he just doesn't look good. But in games where he's under pressure and his team does need to win, he does tend to be pretty good. Steelers had a really bad loss as well. Their defense just doesn't look the same as it did, um, as we usually know the Steelers' defense. You know, um, it, yeah, it's a tough one to pick. Um, I forgot who won this matchup last time. I know it was really close, though. I think the, the Browns ended ended up winning, though. Um, if not, I think I'm still going to go with the Browns regardless. Um, I don't really have a reason. It's it, a reason. It, it's more of just like a gut feeling, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And then we got the Falcons against the Bills. Give me the Bills. I wouldn't be surprised if the Bills lost this game. Bills have been up and down this whole year. You know, they'll look really good one week, and then the next week they just fall off. Um, they, they are getting a little bit more involved in the run game, which I like to see. They are using Devin, uh, Devin Singletary a little bit more. Um, so I think that's helping out Josh Allen. They just need to continue to do that. Give me the Bills there. Uh, and then we got the Rams against the Ravens. It's a tough pick there. Um, I don't know Lamar Jackson's status, if he's going to be back for this game or not. Um, I think regardless, I'm going to go with the Rams. But if Lamar does play, he could definitely come out here and single-handedly win this game. I just, I, I, I think Cooper Cup and Odell are going to have a really good game against this uh, Ravens secondary. Um, whether or not Marlon Humphreys is going to be back as well. And then don't forget Van Jefferson, who's who's been a little bit of a sleeper for the Rams this year at the receiving position. So. Uh, I just think it's going to be too many weapons. Matt Stafford didn't look very good last week, and they still found a way to win and get their receivers involved. Um, so I think Matt Stafford not only is going to have a better game, but um, the Rams receivers continue to tear things up, and they come out here and get a win. And then we got the Bucks against the Jets, another lock of the week. Give me the Bucks. Um, I kind of feel like this could be a close game in the first half. As, as weird as that may sound, I feel like it could be a little bit close. And then the second half will come, and then the Bucks will really start, you know, putting their foot on the gas, and um, Tom Brady will start taking over. Uh, and then we got the Texans against the Niners. Niners at home. Give me the Niners. Um, I know Texans beat the Chargers. I think Niners are going to be a little bit more. Um, what's the word here? 
not careful with the football, but just play a lot more, um, you know, not, not as high tempo, you know, just do what they can to win the game. Actually, they do have Trey Lance starting at quarterback, so that could either benefit the Texans or benefit the Niners. I don't know. I'm excited to see Trey Lance play, though. I'm excited to see what he got. We, we've seen a little bit with him this season. We saw him start one or two games before, I believe, and he looked all right. Um, he just needs to, you know, Trey Lance just needs to play with confidence, you know, play with confidence and, you know, not always whip the ball, you know, whenever he's out there, he loves to just throw 120, 120 miles per hour on that ball and whip it, you know what I'm saying? But, um, if you, you know, he just plays relaxed, look at those screen passes to Debo. I think Trey Lance could have a very successful game, um, run the ball a lot and just play some good defense and, uh, throw off Davis Mills. Um, and then we got the Giants against the Bears, Bears at home. This is a weird game to pick, kind of like the Bears Seahawks one. It's just like a game that doesn't really matter for either team. Uh, Nick Foles making a comeback game. It was cool to see him start. Um, honestly, I feel like if any other quarterback played that game, the Bears probably would have lost. I didn't know Nick Nick Foles was going to be the starting quarterback. I do feel like that made a difference, especially in a snow game. Um, here, I, I give me the Bears. I just. I cannot trust the Giants to do a a anything on offense. Like, they're so bad. They probably have the two worst backup quarterbacks in the league. I feel like there's so many other backup quarterbacks, whether they're free agents or, you know, someone you could get on the waiver wire, someone who got cut, someone you could trade. There's just so many better backup op options. I'm stuttering a lot once again. Um, that rat is still in my mind, I'm telling you, man. Or mouse, whatever. But, uh... What was I guess? Mike Lennon is terrible. Like, he's absolutely terrible. Um, maybe we see a little bit of a Mike Lennon revenge game against the Chicago Bears. Remember when the Bears gave him that god-awful contract a couple years back? I think it was in, like, 2016-17 or something like that. So maybe Mike Lennon has a little bit... I mean, it's not really a revenge game. If anything, it's more of a revenge game for the Bears for giving Mike Lennon that contract. But, um... Yeah, Mike Lennon is terrible. Like, even, like, Josh Jackson, who was on the Jets before the Ravens got him. Like, there's there's so many better backup quarterbacks that Giants could have went for. And it doesn't really matter because they probably would have lost a lot of games anyways since they're pretty bad. And they're probably just looking to get a draft pick anyways. But still, it's like, bro, Jake Fromm and Mike Lennon are so bad. Like, the Giants cannot do anything on offense. It, it's, it, it's bad. So, yeah, give me the Bears. Um, but the Giants defense could propose a lot of problems to the Bears. Um, I think Mag Matt Nagy at this point of the season is just trying to fight for his job. Um, so, yeah, give me the Bears. I got my Choco. And then we got the Eagles against Washington. Give me the Eagles. Um, I, I don't even know if Washington has a chance to make the playoffs if they win this game. I, I think maybe they might have the slightest chance. But um, losing that game against Dallas, and not just losing, getting absolutely just, like, you know, pummeled, you know what I'm saying, um, <laughs> against that Dallas team, I think it just, it really ruined a lot of their, their, um, what's the, what's the right word? Not their energy, oh, camera's a little bit blurry, whatever. Uh, sorry about the camera, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, they, they, their morals dropping a little bit. I think the Eagles are playing up for this game more than Washington is. Um, I have no clue, you know, if Taylor Heine, Taylor Heineke probably will be starting again. Um, just give me the Eagles. I I just think yeah, like I said before, Washington after that game, it's hard to come back after a game like that because it's not like they just lost. They got absolutely pummeled in a divisional matchup against Dallas. Um, and it's not even that I like the Eagles a lot in this game. It's just more and you know, me not really trusting Washington here. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if Washington won. You know, they're still going to play hard. Ron Rivera is going to try his best to get that team going. We know how good of a coach he is. Um, so we'll see. Uh, and then we got the Panthers against the Saints. Two of, other than the Giants, two of probably the worst. You could argue the Jags too. Two of like some of the worst offensive teams right now going against each other. Two, like, really bad offenses with really good defenses. 
Um, I'm kind of sick and tired of picking the Saints. I'm not going to lie. I picked the Saints so much this season, and they just keep losing for me. Um, I, I have no clue who's going to be starting quarterback if Taysom Hill is going to come back, if it's going to be Ian Book again, or if they're going to go with Trevor Simeon if he comes back from COVID. Uh, the Saints O-line is absolutely destroyed. I don't know why I picked them against Miami. I guess I didn't know how bad the COVID protocol really hit that Saints team um, because it was bad. And, and you could see it, you know, Sean Payton was was struggling with that team. He, he seemed pretty, I don't blame him. I mean, he, he, there's not much you could do with, with what they had out there on offense. Um, I have no clue who to go with in this game, honestly. Um, I, I guess I'm going with the Saints. I, I don't know. I mean, they still have a chance to make the playoffs even after losing to Miami. So maybe they play up for this game a little bit more. But yeah, I don't know. And then we got the Lions against the Seahawks. <sighs> Another team I just hate picking now are the Seahawks because I picked the Seahawks so much and they just continue to lose. Um, give me the Lions on the road. I, I, I think the Lions are actually a lot more motivated to play this game, which is kind of weird to say. Um, I mean, the Seahawks don't have a chance to make the playoffs. I don't really think they're used to being in this position. The Lions have been in this position for... <laughs> Ever since week one, they really knew what was going to happen. So I think they're going to play up to this game. I wouldn't be surprised if Russell Wilson came out here and had a great game, except I say that every single week and we haven't seen that yet. Um, he actually, he wasn't even that bad last week, especially against a really good Chicago Bears defense. It's just the Seahawks defense really sold them towards the end of that game. Give me the Lions. Um, it's, it's sort of just like my upset pick of the week. Lions are looking you know, solid in these past couple weeks. They've been able to pull some wins and some close games. They almost beat the Falcons in a close one. Uh, so, yeah, give me the Lions. And then we got the Cardinals against the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Uh, give, me the, give, me, give me the Cowboys at home. I know the Cardinals have been really good on the road this year. Um, Cardinals just haven't been looking the same in the past couple weeks. I think Dallas has their momentum back. They're looking really good on offense. Dak Prescott is slinging the ball. Um, I, I, I think this, this Cardinals offense might struggle a little bit here against Dallas. They're going to, they're still going to put points up on the board, you know, just because that's how good Kyler Murray is. I'm not sure about James Conner's status. I'm pretty sure he'll be back with limited snaps. But, uh, yeah, just give me the Cowboys. I, they're looking red hot right now. The, uh, the, the things that this – sorry if the mic's been far away. The things that this uh, Cowboys defense has been able to do this season is great. I mean, if you just watch, like, the formations and the stuff they do on – and I'm not even a big football head. But, like, if you just watch the things that they do with Demarcus Lawrence, Micah Parsons, um, like – every single play it's like they have them in different positions like you'll look and michael parsons will he'll be inside or he'll be an outside linebacker or he'll be like he's all over the place you look at demarcus lawrence sometimes they put him on the inside d lineman sometimes they'll bring him to the outside sometimes they'll even you know actually no they won't put my linebacker but they just move these guys around so much that it just throws off offenses and it's really just a beautiful thing to watch. And then you got Trayvon Diggs, who's just an absolute ball hawk staring down the quarterback. Um, yeah, I, I just love what the Cowboys have been able to do on defense. Um, we'll see how it tra translates in the playoffs. So. And then we got the Vikings against the Green Bay Packers. Give me the Packers at home. I know this game is bigger for the Vikings than it really is for the Packers. You know, Vikings are looking to fight for the playoffs. They really need a divisional win here. Last time they played, the Vikings won, and that's exactly why I'm going with the Packers. I just don't trust the Vikings to win two games in a season against the Packers. The Vikings just aren't consistent enough of a team. The Packers, even though they're guaranteed to make the playoffs, they still want to fight to get that first round by. I think that would be huge for this Packers team to get guys back from injury and be healthy to get A-Rod feeling really good. You know, David Bakhtari, a lot of these guys who've been coming back, maybe Jair Alexander. Um, so, yeah, Packers are Packers are looking on a roll right now. 
So yeah, there's my picks. Um, I got a couple of upsets in there. I got the Lions. I got the, uh, I got the, uh, maybe that's it. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, those are my picks. Um, anything else I gotta say? Not, not really. I'm, I'm sick again. Three losses though. The past like two, three weeks, I've had three losses. I'm trying to get two or less. I'm trying to win in my football pool because in my football pool, I've been in the final like literally every week. But I could just never, you know, get that Monday night game right, which is a Monday night game here. Okay, we got the Brown Steelers. Hopefully the Browns show out for me on that one. But yeah, uh, there's my week 17 picks. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Sub to the channel if you are not subscribed. And turn on post notifications. Y'all know what to do. And I love you guys. And I will see you next week. Peace.